<laughs> well, praise the Lord, it's been a long time in coming. Today's the first day that I can actually sit down and not have to think about going over to another house to clean it, not have to be concerned about doing or achieving some goal other than just living in our, we call it our house, our new apartment, and just being blessed by what God has given us. You know, I'm humbled the more that I live here, because even as you saw, maybe looking down past me, it's a long porch, and the porch that the camera sits on is a big square porch, and there's just so much that I just, I wake up in the morning, and I, I walk out, and have to take care of the plants where this camera sitting is there's some tulips growing and some bulbs and we're going to grow a vegetable garden and we just have so much that God has used even in every location we've gone to we've done little things like that but never allowed us to just spread out and to enjoy what God has done and I think you know we all need to be mindful of those times and places where God wants to bless us, where God wants to just say, hey, relax, I got it, I'm in control, I am the Lord your God, I will take care of you, I will provide for you, I will meet your need. I was sharing with a person today on the internet, and it was a sheep, and she seemed to have a kind of a bitter attitude about the church, you know, that somehow she had been burned or either been burned or read about or seen or somehow participated in some type of ministry that had fallen or gone on the wayside in some way. And so she vented it and I thought, wow, it only took like four questions and bingo, all of a sudden all this garbage about the church or pastor had come up. And so I mentioned that, you know, you really need to get involved in a church and be involved with a pastor so you can ask them questions and get involved and learn about what a pastor is, who a pastor is, and what they do in the ministry. Because I think sometimes, just like we used to say, your interpretation or your way you look at God sometimes determines how you deal with other people. Sometimes the way you interpret or define a pastor will influence how you deal with Christianity as a whole. I think people are getting the wrong idea sometimes that they think that maybe pastors are perfect. <laughs> or that they have to go through this process of getting their life together so that they can then go into the ministry and suddenly become shining examples of the faith and leading people into the promised land, so to speak. Well, I don't know about you, <laughs> but I find that amusing. <laughs> I know too many pastors. <laughs> I mean, God bless them, but, you know, they're, they're just like me, you know. <laughs> who they are is who they are, you know. They have personality, they have faults, they have failings, you know. Or maybe you think I'm perfect. <laughs> no, I don't think you think so. But you know, that brings us to a point of, do you think that the men of God written in the Bible were perfect? Do you think that somehow they lived a life that was a shining example to follow? Do you think that Paul didn't blow it? Do you think that Peter didn't make mistakes? Do you think that the church in the book of Acts didn't pick the wrong apostle or possibly make bad decisions? I mean, God is at work in us, which is the hope of glory, but he's also covering us by his grace and mercy because, frankly, at any moment he could, poof, wipe us out. But we recognize that because of his love, he extends his mercy towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us so that we would be forgiven of our sins, past, present, and future, because you're never going to get out of the flesh you're living in. You're going to sin. So this corruption that you were born into 
is going to produce corruption you're always going to have this nature in you that sins and while we say in first john sin not we also recognize that we're forgiven for sin because we ask god to forgive us when we do sin because we know that our base nature will rise up and trip us up now a lot of people i'll admit you know they like to blame it on the devil or blame it on something else or blame it on this or blame it on that or lately i see a lot of people blaming the president <laughs> i think that's just foolish they don't blame themselves where you know like daniel they stand up and say i did it me and my fellow brethren the jews we as the children of israel we blew it wouldn't that be neat if we all could say that if we could just stand up and admit our faults all of us you and i and just say hey i did it yep that was me sorry oops <laughs> please forgive me <laughs> and then move on you know forget it forgive it move on be blessed but you see this woman was bitter now because she had built up this expectation of wanting a pastor to fulfill what Jesus is now Jesus we can look at and say hey he's he's our example you know follow him you know, but you know Jesus in me is who you might see doing the good because pardon me but the scripture says that in me there dwelleth no good thing and frankly the only thing that dwells good in me is God you know and Jesus said it himself call no man good except your father which is in heaven he alone is good so I kind of think that you know maybe people kind of get the wrong idea about what a pastor is or what a preacher is or a minister or a priest you know they they kind of want to make them into some kind of American Idol or world European Idol or wherever you're living whatever kind of you know showboat that you want to lift up in some way to try to make a shining example kind of like when they say things about Mother Teresa I'm sure Mother Teresa had bad days. <laughs> she was human. So knowing that we recognize our source point of truth as the Bible, then we can recognize that everyone that is born of a woman is born into sin. Sorry, the only exception would be Jesus. And we know that he was immaculately conceived. He was conceived by way of the Holy Spirit, which we don't really completely understand, except that God did it, good enough. <laughs> when God does it, hey, it's perfect. So I think we need to get a handle on this idea of trying to look at each other and assume that your perfection is going to somehow be accomplished in you. You're not. You're not going to be perfect. You see, there's a teaching out lately that, you know, people don't want to hear your words, they want to see your actions. Well, it's not your actions that really are going to determine your faith. It's what you do in the crisis moments that determines who you are. Like my wife, you know, my wife, she can tell you all about my faults. No problem. <laughs> she can tell you about my failings. Easy. But she can also tell you about my successes she can tell you about those times when if a crisis hits what do we do you know where do we go who do we turn to what is the first thing that comes out of my mouth first thing for her because god speaks to her through her devotionals is did you read your devotional now other christians i would say did you pray or did you talk to god or did you ask god but for her because that is her quality time with god i say did you read your devotional and every time i do she says, I don't remember it, you know, because she reads it every day. And she reads her Bible every day. But whenever she goes back to her devotional to see what it said, whatever the crisis was, fits her devotional perfectly. Now, that applies to her personally, individually, because of the Holy Spirit, not because of her or I or some, you know, denomination or religion or faith or whatever. It's applicable by way of God doing it because God is bringing her up and growing her as a planting of the Lord to become a child of God. So he speaks to her distantly, so to speak, through her devotional. Now, some people, when they're reading their Bible study, you know, like right now I know that uh, I think Rick Warren is doing a phenomenal study on 
on how to read the Bible and you know what you should write down and how you should apply it and you know all this stuff and it's wonderful you know I I applaud him for doing that you know and giving some discipleship materials to people to evaluate and use in their life and I know a lot of people can sit down and read the Bible you know and in their daily reading and sure enough God speaks to them because some portion of it is highlighted to them it just kind of like it's big neon lights on it. <laughs> it turns red. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but some portion sticks out in them. And then some people, you know, like we share on video, you know, God will speak direct. There are times where I've sat still and shut up. Yes, it's a shock. I do know how to shut up long enough to listen. <laughs> but whenever I'm still, especially in the bathtub, God usually speaks to me. He usually talks to me about what he wants me to share on videos or maybe something personal in my life or maybe sometimes things I'm thinking about he'll give me an answer to or a wide variety of experiences you know, that God and I have that makes him personal to me. Now, it may not work for you, but from what I heard from Michelle Pilar, I guess God speaks to her in the shower or in the bathtub too. So. Praise the Lord, there's two of us. <laughs> and he may speak to you in some other way. But there are other people that, you know, whether devotionals or Bible studies, whether sharing with other people or whether getting some, you know, mystical, marvelous, magical experience of some kind, God meets them where they're at. Jesus reveals himself to them. And so, when he does, he is then the living God that we choose to lift up because if we lift up Jesus then all men will be drawn to him but if we lift up men then no one will be drawn to them because they will fall in some way they will fail in some capacity they will no longer be that idol that we somehow placed in the presence so to speak or in the setting of where God should be alone and that's the one that we always look to. So don't get blown out, you know, just because you found somebody failing. When you go to a church, I look for a pastor who is been through it, who's been through kind of like, you know, the ringer, who's kind of like been beat up and kind of stomped on a little bit, you know, and has learned wisdom from it, you know, and has grown, you know, and kind of experienced the same things I've experienced, you know. And as you become older in the Lord, you'll discover that those are the kind of people you want that have learned mercy and grace and how to apply it to all of us as we need to walk in his love, in his fellowship. The world does not need supermen, but supernatural men. Men who will persistently turn the self out of their lives and let divine power work through them. Oops, wrong one. No wonder it sounded funny. <laughs> it's like reading a wrong day. Seek this time as a time of communion with me, fellowship with me, not as a time to ask questions and have them answered, but meet me in communion to spend quality time with me. It is soul food that I have provided for you, a time to rest, to be still and know me. Do not expect a perfect church, but find in a church the means of coming very near to me. That alone matters. Then the much that is husk falls away. Hold it of no account. Grasp the truth and find me, the true bread of life. It's not the superficial things that are of the church that you are consumed with to be looking for, but rather where I met you at to know that I am there in the midst of my people. The lesson of the grain is the lesson of my church and me. The real life is all that matters. The outward church is the husk, but the husk was necessary to bring the life grain to man. As you go to church and as you find the ministry that God wants you in and participate in it, then don't be surprised if people fail, if people fall down, if people blow it or make mistakes. That's to teach you and I forgiveness and mercy to extend the grace with which we first got saved but also the grace that will take us all the way home to be with the Lord soon because it's easy to be a legalist anyone can find fault 
doesn't take much of a genius to do that. What really takes a man of God and someone who's been forgiven is to be able to share the consolation that they've been given by the Holy Spirit to someone else who's going through exactly what you've just been through.